Another look at the top five quarterbacks in Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest mock draft. They're the top five quarterbacks in everybody's opinion. There's sort of a big five in this draft class. There are uh, conflicting opinions on in what order they should be selected. That's how Mel sees them. And Lewis Riddick, you, you made a very interesting comment earlier this week on our show. We have since bounced it off a number of people, and I'd love to sort of revisit it here, in which you said that you've talked to some evaluators whose opinions you regard who look at Mac Jones of Alabama as the best quarterback in this class. I'd love you to pick up the thought from there and explain what they're seeing. Look, I, let, let me start off by saying it like this, okay? The late, great Bill Walsh, who I read everything I can get my hands on about what he thought about quarterback play in particular, kind of basically put it like this, that he said, you know, when it comes to quarterback play, the whole in the end is usually greater than the sum of its parts. And what does he mean by that, that the whole – is usually greater than the sum of its parts. It means this, that all of the traits that we're talking about with quarterbacks as far as height, weight, speed, arm angle, you know, throwing velocity, you know, arm strength, all that stuff, yeah, that's great, and you want that. Obviously, you want people who have those physical traits. But when he's talking about the whole being greater than the sum of the parts, how many times have we talked about quarterbacks and from the neck up, whether or not they're the guys who can just summon that just instinctive, intrinsic quality in them that allows them to make good decisions and be accurate with the football over and over and over and over and over again? And that's what people point to on top of the fact that Mac Jones throws the football very well. That's what they point to as far as his ability and why he is being considered maybe maybe one of the best quarterbacks in this draft. Maybe ultimately, depending upon where he goes, ending up being the best quarterback in this draft. It's not to say that he's going to because we know how much situations determine player success and failure. And the guys in which we're, he is competing against that quarterback in this draft class – are there some spectacular individuals? Quite honestly, I think Trey Lance has the highest upside of everyone in this draft, depending upon where he goes. But I can see why people say, because of the innate qualities and the mental qualities that Mac Jones possesses and the kinds of things that he is able to make up for with his mind that he doesn't have in terms of physical skill, lead people to believe that at the NFL level, which where at some point in time, the drop back game is going to be what you're going to have to master. He may be the very best one and ultimately may wind up being the very best one. And I think that's where Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers are going down that path and saying, is he that guy? Maybe they've made the decision. Maybe they haven't. But maybe that's what's leading them down this road. What do you think, Bug? Well, Green, I can definitely see why people say that because at the end of the day, regardless of what you do from an athletic standpoint, the name of the game playing the quarterback position is really simple. Can you be a great decision maker and can you be accurate throwing the football? And Matt Jones checks that. My only issue is this, is that Matt Jones is not the only guy that checks that box and on top of that can add some elite athleticism. Okay, Justin Fields can check that box. Zach Wilson can check that box. As far as guys that can throw the football accurately, and make really, really good decisions. They all are not finished products. They all have things that they need to work on. They all need to speed their progressions up, Greeny. So I have a hard time, whoever, and, and I know Lewis is well connected. I, I would just push back to whoever said that and say, if you can have the guy that can elite process, that can make elite decisions, that can take care of the football, because when a quarterback holds the football, he's holding the lives and dreams of everybody in this organization in his hands. I would just push back. If you can have that guy and you can add a guy that can run 4-4 and get out and escape, why wouldn't you want Deshaun Watson? Because Greedy, by all accounts, that's what Deshaun Watson is. He's a guy that can throw the football accurately and he can elite process. He just had one of the greatest passing seasons we've seen in the National Football League. And I'm not talking about athletic ability running 4-4. I don't give a damn how fast you run. I'm talking about playing the quarterback position from the pocket. What are we saying about Lamar Jackson? Great athlete, MVP, man, we need him to be a better passer. So as much as we talk about athletic ability and off-platform throws and second reaction, let's not forget that this position will always, and I do say always, it's an absolute, it's always going to come to come down to throwing the football from the pocket in crucial situations on crucial downs, and you have to be able to do that. I don't care how fast you run. Matt Jones can do that, but there are other quarterbacks that can do that, plus they give you the athletic ability. That's why I don't think Mack is the best quarterback in this draft. Yeah, that really is an indication. As Lewis, I'll give you the final thought here. 
uh, of where the game has gone. That maybe that other that ability to do other things, as they say, when the play doesn't work, when whatever play you call doesn't work, I can go do my own play and make something good happen. And we see a sure. lot of the top NFL quarterbacks now, Lewis, who can do that. Mac Jones does not seem like someone who'll be able to check that box. Yeah, and and he look, I think he'd be the first person to tell you that. Look, he, he's not that kind of quarterback. He's not Deshaun. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not that kind of guy. And, you know, th this is where quarterback evaluation and quarterback preference is so subjective because it's not, you know, it's not just about that individual's traits and what that individual can do when you're talking about what teams are really trying to do, which is build winners and win Super Bowls. If they're not trying to get the best guy who can put up the best stats, who can make the most sports center like plays and be on sports center top 10 and can put up the most fantasy points. Team builders are charged with trying to build the best football teams. And that quarterback, Booger knows this. I know this. Anybody who's played the game knows this. Anybody who has sat in the team meeting room knows this. When they talk about quarterback play, they talk about do not put our team in jeopardy by being careless with the football. And can you, in crucial moments, at two minutes at the end of the half, two minutes at the end of the game, third down at the end of the game when the game's within seven points, can you make the right read and make the right call as far as when, when the game is on the line? Can you do that for me? Not once, not a couple times, but what we're after is can you do it enough times to where we can win Super Bowls? And quite honestly, the guy who has won the most Super Bowls and the guy who we consider the GOAT, is, th is that kind of guy. He's not a great athlete. He's not, he, it's not that. It's about what you can do. And that, what you can do from a mental standpoint. And you know what? Justin can do it. Trey Lance can do it. Zach Wilson can do it. Maybe, you know, Trevor Lawrence is the guy who ultimately does it. That's what's so cool about this. It's subjective. Everybody has a different viewpoint on this. And so that's what makes this so fascinating. That's why people are so passionate and heated about it. And we're going to see what happens. That's why the NFL stays winning, doesn't it? Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.